Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> Cell phones, cell phones, and more cell phones. Everyone has a cell phone, and at least one person always forgets to turn it off when asked to do so. I wish I had a box made out of cell phone signal blocking material that people could put their cell phone into when asked, whether they be in a movie theater or even a classroom their cell phones in the box would not ring because they could not receive a signal. Hey, Dr. Smith, I've got a great idea. Dr. Smith, let's build a cell phone signal blocking box. I wonder what type of material we should use. I wonder if such a box can even be built. If we can figure this out, I'll be one happy dog. Light is strange. It can act like a particle or a wave. In order to build a cell phone signal blocker, it will be most beneficial to focus on the wave properties of light. As we can see with water dripping into a bucket of water, the water waves created by the drops have an amplitude, a length, and a direction. The length of a wave is referred to as its wavelength. It is the wavelength of light that determines the name of the region of light. Very long wavelengths of light on the order of the size of buildings down to our size, roughly six feet, are called radio waves. Microwaves have a wavelength around the size of a honeybee. It is hard to believe, but the light that our eyes detect, the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, are roughly the wavelength that match the size. Single-celled organisms. With red being the longest and violet the shortest. All these different ranges of light are referred to as the electromagnetic spectrum. Notice the shorter the wavelength of the light, the more energetic the light is. For example, light that is the size of atoms, called X-rays, are so powerful they can pass through skin and muscle, but not bone, allowing doctors and dentists to use X-rays to take pictures of our bones and teeth to help them make diagnoses. If we are going to build a cell phone signal blocker, we need to know where cell phone signals fall on the electromagnetic spectrum. Cell phone signals are in the region between radio and microwaves. This region here, so their wavelength is between several feet down to the size of roughly a honeybee. Just what is light made of? All light consists of two oscillating waves that are perpendicular to each other. One of the waves is an oscillating magnetic field and the other is an oscillating electric field. If we are going to build a cell phone signal blocker, we need to find something that will block these fields. When a fluorescent light is placed close to a plasma ball, the electric and magnetic fields of the plasma ball excite the gases inside the fluorescent bulb and these excited gas molecules strike the fluorescent sides of the bulb generating light. Isn't that cool? So if we place a material between the fluorescent bulb and the plasma ball and the bulb fails to light up, then that means we have found a material that blocks electric and magnetic fields. Let's try some different materials. Let's first try a glass lid.
Nope. How about a metal lid? It works. How about aluminum foil? It works too. Recall radio waves are very close to cell phone signals on the electromagnetic spectrum. That gives me an idea for another experiment. If we turn on Many a radio and surround it with a radio wave blocking material, the sound from the radio has to stop. And if the material cannot Many block radio waves, the, way the sound from the radio has to continue. To dwell upon its horrors and to imprint them vividly upon the minds of the younger generation. Here are a bunch of experiments. Which ones do you think will block radio waves from being received by the radio? Let's try each material and see which ones work. Looks like aluminum foil would be a great material. But aluminum foil tears easy. What if we get holes in the aluminum foil? Can it still effectively block radio signals? What do you think? Let's try it and find out. Let's try it again, but with an even bigger hole using an aluminum clothes dryer exhaust tube. My name is Sarah Murbosh. I'm a reporter at the Dallas Morning News. The Dallas County District Attorney Susan Hawk um, has faced numerous allegations that she took on. That's because radio waves are huge. Remember, radio waves have a wavelength that is the size of buildings 
down to around six feet. The holes in our foil are not that big, so the radio waves cannot fit. However, look at microwaves. They are a lot smaller. The presence of holes may be a serious problem when building a cell phone signal blocker. So let's try it. I think we're ready to try to stop a cell phone signal. Let's first test to make sure our cell phones are working. Looks good. Now let's wrap one cell phone in aluminum foil and call it with the other cell phone. It works. What if we make a hole in the aluminum foil and try it again? bad, even small ones in a cell phone signal blocker. One last test. A microwave oven should block microwaves. The door to a microwave oven has tiny holes, but the holes are a lot smaller than a honeybee, so the microwaves are blocked. Cell phone signals are even larger than microwaves, so if we put a cell phone in a microwave oven and close the door, the phone should not ring. Right? Let's try it. It rang! What is going on? In fact, cell phones ring when placed in most microwave ovens because microwave ovens leak microwave radiation. Microwave ovens have gaps and holes especially around the door, that are a lot bigger than honeybees. This is a microwave radiation detector, and let's see where the leaks are in this microwave oven. As long as any leaked microwave radiation is below 4 watts per kilogram, as read on the microwave radiation detector, the United States Federal Communication Commission, or FCC, has rated the microwave oven as safe to use. Still, I don't like knowing my microwave oven is leaking. That bites. <coughs> Let's review. All waves have an amplitude, wavelength, and direction. It is the wavelength that determines the name of the light in the electromagnetic spectrum. Metal, like mylar in a helium balloon, or metals, like aluminum foil, effectively block light as long as there are not holes or gaps bigger than the wavelength of light being blocked. Cell phone signals are light that has a wavelength smaller than a few feet but larger than a bumblebee. So any cell phone signal blocker 
must consist of metal with holes or gaps no larger than roughly a bumblebee, otherwise it will not work. 